William Ellis was a high school student. He is regarded as a good scholar with exceptional talent in sports. His bulky physique coupled with his quick thinking made him a prodigy in the sport of football. Although amazing, William had bigger plans. He would often challenge and change the rules of the sport he loved so much. With his quick thinkering coupled with his rule changing, he managed to create a new sport called rugby football. This sport quickly became popular all around the country. Although he made the sport, William was not accredited for its success. He was ignored and forgotten. Dismayed and upset, he was invited to join the manor in hopes that he can be acknowledged for the popular sport he made. The forward is a combination of two roles. He is considered as a rescue type survivor and a kiting type survivor. He uses brute force to save his fellow survivors in dire need and uses his speed to outmaneuver the hunter. The forward looks like your stereotypical jack bully you see in movies, and for good reason. If you want to bully the hunter and bump them into submission, the forward is the right survivor for you. The forward's active skill is called At the start of every game, the forward carries around a rugby football. You can click on the ability to start dashing in the direction you're facing. And like the flash tapping into the speed force, you just start zooming. The forward's physique makes it so that if you hit the hunter while using this ability, you can knock them off balance. If the hunter is knocked into objects and walls, they will be stunned for a period of time. There are three things you need to know about this ability. Number one, the rugby football is a consumable item. This means that, unlike Helena's cane, this item will not stay with you the entire duration of the game and will run out if you use it too much. This is weird because, well, you don't need a rugby football to run very fast, but okay, game logic. Although the forward is a good survivor on his own, the rugby football is an extremely powerful item. The speed boost and the stun it provides are game changers if used right. Be conservative and use this item only if you deem it to be necessary. Number two, using the rugby football has a downside. If the item runs out or when you stop using it, the forward will have to take a breather and will get stunned for a short amount of time. He's not a robot, he needs rest every once in a while. Third, the stun you inflict on the hunter when you knock them into objects or walls is relative to how much distance you have traveled. If you've traveled only for a short distance, the stun duration is minimal. If you traveled a long distance, the stun duration is longer. This is also true for the distance of the knockback. If you've been dashing for quite a while, the knockback distance is farther. Use your rugby balls wisely and maximize your stun potential. This ability is unique only to the forward. Unlike most stuns in the game, this skill is very difficult to pull off and has a learning curve. Don't expect that you'd master this skill overnight. Be sure to practice making quick turns and flashy maneuvers first before you use forward in ranked matches. There's a reason why he has a 3-star difficulty. Don't be an asshole. The forward's first passive trait is called The forward is athletically gifted and monstrously strong. I mean, look at those guns. He can vault obstacles 20% faster and pull down pallets 50% faster versus the average survivor. When he stuns the hunter either through tackling them or through pallets, the stun duration is increased by 15%. This passive alone is every kiter main's wet dream. The increased vaulting speed coupled with faster pallet pulldowns not only make the forward a more reliable kiter than the rest, but also makes you a bane of every hunter main in the game. Assuming you know the fundamentals of kiting, any hunter who tries to pursue you from the onset of the game has already lost. Trust me, you'll be wasting so much of their time that you're basically handing your team a free win on a silver platter. In the advent that you used up all of your charges, this trait guarantees that you still have good kiting potential and can go toe-to-toe -to -toe against a pursuing hunter. The forward's second passive trait is called 
clumsy and terrible with machines, the forward suffers from permanent decoding debuff. You decode Cypher is 30% slower than the average survivor. Hey, as amazing as you are as a person, you just can't have everything. You can have all the muscles in the world forward, but no amount of muscle can hide the fact that you're dumb with machines. Even though this is a very huge decoding debuff, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't decode at all. It's entirely dependent on the situation. If your team is doing great so far and you notice nobody is asking for help, then the best way to make yourself useful is to decode in the meantime. If your team is in dire need of help, like for instance, your decoder is being pursued, then it's probably best for you to help them. The key to being a successful survivor is having excellent game awareness. Do anything that you can to make yourself useful for the team's benefit. The forward's final trait is called... The forward's strong physique makes it easier for him to escape the hunter's clutches. Struggling speed is increased by 10%. Picture this. After wasting so much of the hunter's time by kiting your weight out of sticky situations, after the hunter has spent a decade trying to pursue you, they finally caught you. They have incapacitated you and tied you to a balloon. Is this the end? Has your reign of terror of traumatizing the hunter put to a halt? Well, not exactly. Because good news for you and bad news for the hunter, you could still be a massive nuisance even after being knocked out. You can try and wiggle your way out of sticky situations. If the hunter is careless and would not put you in a chair ASAP, then that's just stupid. Tap your scream aggressively for better chances of surviving. Now that you know the forward skills, the question has to be asked. How do you exactly play the forward? First, cue for a game. Second, pick the forward because why did you watch this video if you won't try him anyway? Third, fix your personas. Since the forward can be a kiter or a rescuer, your persona should depend on a playstyle that you want. If you want to be a kiter, invest your persona points on broken windows and borrowed time. Know that the left branch of the persona tree is for aiding kiters. Knee-jerk reflex and broken windows give you speed buffs when vaulting through obstacles and terrain. Excellent for kiting. While the right side of the persona tree is a necessity for any survivor. Borrow time is such a broken ability, trust me on it. Invest your remaining persona points on exit path and either will to survive or great power. Will to survive increases your struggling speed on top of your inherent 10% buff, while great power increases the stun duration of your pallet stunts on top of your inherent 15% buff. If you are excellent at stunning hunters with pallets, then I suggest you choose great power. But if you think you'll die a lot, then Will to Survive is your get out of jail free card. If you want to be a rescuer, invest your persona points on Tide Turner and Borrowed Time. The south branch of the persona tree is geared towards rescue type survivors. Save your complex, herd mentality, and Tide Turner increase your escape chances after you've saved a fellow survivor from a rocket chair. Tide Turner gives you a temporary shield against hunters' attacks, guaranteeing that you and the person you're trying to rescue don't immediately get knocked out after the rescue operation. Invest your remaining persona points on sticker and exit path. These will give you a chance to get back up your feet after being incapacitated by the hunter. It's always good to have an extra life. Fourth, change your understanding of survivors. A survivor is a person who cowers in fear, will try their best to hide, and will panic once they hear that heartbeat sound effect go off. I mean, who wouldn't? This game is scary. However, in order to be a successful forward, you gotta be the forward. He is a survivor that wants to tackle problems head on, literally. See this face? Does he look like a scaredy cat to you? Does he look like a person who gives a crap? No. The forward, he ain't no bitch, he ain't no wussy, he's strong, and so should you. Fifth, when you spawn in a game, check your surroundings. If the hunter is anywhere near you, try to grab his attention. Vote excessively, pull down palance if you have to. These actions notify the hunter of your whereabouts, and that's a good thing. 
just like what we said, not like other survivors that hide, the forward wants to be in harm's way. Wasting the hunter's time is your main objective because the more you put yourself in danger, the safer the entire field is for your teammate. Just be sure that your confidence is backed up with skill, unless you're dead meat. When you spawn in a game and the hunter is nowhere near you, head straight to a cipher machine. Just because you have a debuff doesn't mean you won't decode forever. If the hunter is nowhere near to be seen, then instead of wasting your time hunting down the hunter, might as well make yourself useful and decode a cipher machine. Every percentage you decode in a cipher machine will greatly help the entire team. But this is subject to priorities. You're a rescuer and a kiter, so in the advent that a decoder or a teammate is being preyed on, asking for help while you're decoding, you're probably going to have to leave the cipher machine immediately. Tell your teammates you left a machine at a specific percentage, so one of them will continue where you left off. Coordination with the team is key to winning games. Sixth, when you're being chased down by the hunter and you have no resources to work with with your surroundings, try using your dash to get into a better position or a better part of the map that is suited for kiting. Seven, when a team is incapacitated and is tied to a balloon, use your rugby ball skill to dash and try your best to hit the hunter. This is because if you stun the hunter while they're carrying a survivor, this is counted as an immediate save. Your teammate can stand back up and immediately run away from danger. Eight, when you save a teammate from the hunter, try your best to escort your teammate to safety. Body block for them if you have to because you're their JC, their Jesus Christ. Save them with whatever means necessary because you're a nice guy like that. Ninth, when you run out of your skill, try looking for chests somewhere. Maybe it'll give you another football or another item that you can use for kiting or you can use for rescuing later. And lastly, 10. Simp for your teammates. Cling on to them when you can and put the team's interests above your own. That's it. That's all there is to it for the forward. Practicing is important because the dash skill can make you look like you're the coolest person on earth or the dumbest person around. Thank you for watching. Till next time.